Welcome back to Everard Junction. In this video I will be laying the track on the fiddle yard. It's taken a very long time to get this far. There are 14 storage tracks in all and uh, they run for quite a long way. It really is quite a large amount of track so it has taken a great deal of time to lay it all properly. It's difficult to interpret the size on camera so um, total length in measurements is 12 feet and uh, it's two feet wide but I mean, even then it can be difficult to appreciate how big it actually is so for a point of reference here is a Hornby Mark III coach and as you can see one Hornby Mark III coach really does look rather small and insignificant um, especially when you consider that the whole of the yard is not in frame. The track is laid on a base of cork I've uh, deleted some of the sleepers where the tables join each other with the view of eventually cutting the rails, meaning that each table remains separate. And I've also soldered all of the dropper wires for the DCC onto each section of flexi track, each section of flexi track being about 90 something centimetres long or about one yard. There are approximately 56 yards of track laid on here, um, so if you were to buy that new, that is uh, two of the big 25 yard boxes that Pico sell, which retail for about £80 each. All of the track on here is from the old layout, with the exception of one or two points. Everything else has been recycled from the old layout, and it saved me quite a bit of money. As you can see, there is a lot of track here. Um, incidentally, um, almost all of the track from the original layout has been used to build this fiddle yard so that's both upper and lower decks of the original layout just does this fiddle yard and nothing else so it gives you an idea of how much bigger this layout is compared to the old one okay so let's hand over to myself some time ago when I originally started laying the track shortly after I completed the uh, back scenes in the previous video so I'm going to start building the fiddle yard and the fiddle yard will be for some time the only um, track that is going to be on the layout as I still need to construct the, um, the bed that supports the track on the scenic section um, before I can actually lay the track in the scenic section so I'm going to get this done first and then start building the scenic track after that. I saved almost every piece of track from the old layout it's all Pico Code 100 and much of it is perfectly serviceable. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it and it would be a shame to waste it. So I'm going to be using Pico Code 100 on the fiddle yard and on the scenic part of the layout I will most likely be using Code 75 fine scale track for that more scale appearance. But on the fiddle yard, where realism does not matter in the slightest, I can get away with using this perfectly serviceable Code 100 track. Before I can get going on laying the track, I need to clear all this out of the way and then uh, lay down some cork. All the track on the scenic section will be uh, sitting on a bed of cork. Um, I do this for two reasons. One, it reduces the amount of noise that the trains make when they go around the layout and it also um, helps to create the uh, realism of the, uh, the track in the real world. Um, you'll notice that between the tracks there tends to be a bit of a dip or a, a cess in the ballast and you can represent that by sitting track on top of thin strips of cork and then in between where it's just bare baseboard your ballast will naturally dip lower and then go up if there's an adjacent track and it just looks a little bit more realistic. When the track from the scenic section comes into the fiddle yard it will be raised up by whatever the thickness of this cork is so you almost have to put cork in the fiddle yard anyway or raise the baseboards in the fiddle yard so that they are level with the, the uh, height of the cork on the scenic section. Um, so I've decided just to uh, plaster the tops of the fiddle yards with cork. Um, it's not entirely necessary um, from a realism point of view, but it will make the running of the trains considerably quieter as they hurtle through the fiddle yard, particularly over all the various bits of point work. The cork I'm using is 4mm thick. I bought this from an eBay store and uh, they have a huge choice of cork available. You can buy it in multiple rolls um, and you can go from really, really thin stuff up to much thicker stuff than this. 
Um, I bought it from there as uh, generally there's a bit more choice and I wanted some 4mm cork um, and it's also quite a bit cheaper than um, some branded model railway type cork from a model shop so uh, I've gone for some 4mm thick stuff just because I wanted that realism on the uh, scenic side of the layout um, you could quite happily use thinner stuff if you want to um, I certainly did on the previous layout the cork needs to be glued down I'm going to be using PVA glue it doesn't need to be glued every square inch, but it needs a good bite of glue to uh, hold it down to the baseboard. I'm going to start on the left hand side, over on this board in the corner. I'm going to ignore the triangular extension that I made, um, because it's going to require an odd shape of cork and I might be able to get that out of offcuts later as I start using up all these pieces. I don't want to break into one of these nice rectangular rolls um, until I've made some decent progress. You're going to need to put some weight on the cork as it dries to ensure that it dries nice and flat. I have some relatively heavy hardback books which should do this just fine. Now that's weighted down I can glue the next piece and repeat the process over and over again until I've covered every square inch of the fiddle yard. All the cork is now laid did this over a period of evenings as it did not have enough flat objects to do it all at once. I left each piece 24 hours to dry and uh, it stuck down very nicely. Again I think uh, priming the plywood underneath has helped as the glue did not soak into the plywood and disappear. It remained on the surface and was able to bond to the cork. I've also made sure that uh, where the tables join to each other that uh, I have made sure that uh, where the join is there's also a join in the cork and if the cork ran straight over it I have cut along it with a Stanley knife to make sure that each table is effectively separate. So finally after all this time I can actually start thinking about laying some track. I'm only going to be laying the track in the fiddle yard but it's laying track nonetheless. The design of the fiddle yard is entirely up to you, the builder of the layout. There's loads of different ways of doing this and it's basically down to your personal taste in what sort of rolling stock you like to run. For me personally, I enjoy watching the trains go around the layout. I'm not massively into shunting or single loco movement. So for me, I need maximum length and uh, the ability to store as many trains as possible, um, that being a locomotive and its uh, arrangement of uh, coaches or wagons that is towed behind it. So to get the uh, longest length out of each siding I'm going to be employing uh, the uh, use of curved points which I did on the previous layout. Now those are the Pico ones and uh, they served me extremely well, indeed those are the ones from the old layout and there's still nothing wrong with them. So I'm going to be using those to start the sidings off as early as possible. That should allow me to have nice long sidings where I can store my long trains and HST formations and uh, with any luck on some of the sidings I might actually be able to uh, split them and have two sidings one behind the other to store perhaps two shorter length trains as opposed to one long one. I also need some uh, storage facilities for DMUs um, which are considerably shorter being anywhere from two to four cars in length. So I'm going to get started, I'm going to develop this as I go, I have no fixed plan in my head at the moment of how it's going to be, all I know is I want four main lines. Finally, we've got some track down, looking good already. The layout will be uh, roughly representing the Great Western main line. Um, now that main line has four tracks, it has two fast and two slow lines. Um, the layout will be arranged in a similar fashion to that. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing on the fiddle yard side of things is giving the slow lines four storage sidings each and then the main lines, sorry, the, the fast lines will have three tracks each. I've put more sidings on the slow lines as the slow lines will most likely run almost all of the freight trains. So there's going to be extra demand placed on these sidings for the storage of additional stuff. Just using the uh, Pico set track points, they worked very well on the previous layout so no reason why they wouldn't work well on this one. 
and then all of the corners um, again it's all code 100 track this is just fourth radius and I've uh, been doctoring it and cutting it into various shorter lengths to get everything to uh, to come round and be straight um, to head into the uh, main portion of the fiddle yard. So I've got two uh, copies there, then that'll be mirrored on the other end of the layout, and then in that corner for these additional six, there'll be just two curved points per section. Now I'm happy with the, uh, the entrance that I've sort of come up with for each line. I'm gonna start actually laying the uh, straights all the way down the length of the fiddle yard. So uh, as I go, I am going to be uh, drilling holes and installing dropper wires for the DCC um, so that I can actually fix these uh, pieces of track down. I'm going to be running the dropper wires um, on most pieces of track, if not all pieces of track that are used in the fiddle yard. And I'll be keeping the droppers where I can um, centrally in between each board. So you can see I've just drawn a line there, roughly where I want them to be. I'm going to solder the wires directly to the base of the rail, hence why I've removed one of the sleepers. Uh, something you can do, and indeed I've done it in the past, is solder the wires to the fish plates that connect the uh, tracks together. Um, only slight downside with doing that is you still run the risk of uh, getting an electrical problem because the track itself is not physically powered. It's still relying on a connection to an adjacent piece of metal. So by soldering each one individually, as in each piece of track, you're going to guarantee that that's always going to get to an electrical supply. I get a lot of questions about soldering, and I'm sure I'll continue to get lots of questions about soldering. It's not rocket science, it's uh, really quite easy. You just need a bit of practice, and you need to follow a few basic rules. I'm using a just a cheap Maplin 50-watt uh, soldering iron. I um, tend to find the higher wattage soldering irons make things a bit easier. And you also need to make sure that the tip of the soldering iron is nice and clean. Helps obviously to have one of these uh, helping hand crocodile clip things to hold the wires. Take the soldering iron, making sure it's nice and hot. Gently press against the wire to apply heat to it. And then slowly introduce solder into the joint. And that has now tinned it, ready to be soldered to the track. I've put the track on a scrap bit of wood so I don't burn any of the cork. Now I need to tin the rail. This will take a bit longer as you're heating up a larger piece of metal. Then take the wire introduce it to the rail allow a few seconds for it to cool down and there you go soldered the first two tracks laid. As you can see obviously they're quite close together but as this area is to be used purely for storage I can put the tracks as close as I like um, provided obviously the rolling stock doesn't hit each other. Um, using these two Mark III coaches you can see there is ample space 
in between the coaches we have in excess of 5 mil there so any rolling stock that is marginally wider than the Mark III which is unlikely anyway um, will still be able to get through there um, once you get to the corners obviously things tighten up but the reason I put the point work on the corners is so all the trains are stored in a straight line and there's no danger of things clashing into each other as they negotiate the corners the gap between the tracks is uh, 25 millimeters rail to rail but uh, what I'm using is a 12 millimeter piece of wood and that fits in the gap exactly between the sleepers so I'm using this as a straight edge jig if you like to slowly work my way along the table with the tracks knowing they're all going to be parallel and they'll all be the same distance apart I'm just using some Pico track pins to hold the track down as this again is a fiddle yard and we're not worried about uh, detail and scenery um, the Pico track pins are quite long and they're quite fragile but one of the advantages of using the cork base that we've got here is I can use this pair of pliers drive the pins through the sleeper and through the cork which pins the track in approximately the position I've selected I can then re-measure it make sure I'm happy and if I am happy I can then get the hammer and um, tap those pins home so uh, I'm just pinning it all uh, temporarily with the pliers as I work my way along once I'm happy I'll then go along with the hammer and hammer each one home It's taking a, a while to lay, but I knew it would. It's an enjoyable process. It's nice to see track come together. It's nice and straight. Rolling stock has got plenty of room. Plenty of room for storage as well. Um, what I've done on the, uh, the areas where the uh, baseboards or tables join to each other is to just delete one sleeper from each section of track. And then eventually, once I've uh, secured the uh, sleeper area at the ends of the baseboards down a little more securely, I will uh, cut the rails and uh, then uh, each table will still be separate. Right, well I've uh, just been continuing to do exactly what you've seen in the time lapses and uh, it's coming together nicely. Uh, there is a lot of track going on but uh, should provide plenty of storage. So, uh, so far what I've done is I've laid everything up to about the middle and then you can see I'm 
I'm getting there, uh, doing the outer tracks, and uh, we'll be finishing those close ones off shortly. But, uh, it does take quite a while. I mean, I can lay probably about, I don't know, uh, four to five full lengths of flexi um, in about an hour and a half, something like that. Some of that time has been chewed up, um, just uh, making the older track a little bit neater, getting rid of some of the ballast and generally giving it a clean up. Um, but uh, being Pico Code 100, it's very sturdy stuff and it, it lasts a long time as long as you look after it. So uh, some of the older track is doing just fine and uh, should provide years of uh, service to come. Um, obviously the newer stuff, you can almost just put it straight down. Um, this was on the lower decks of the old layout where obviously there was no scenery. So there was no ballast or anything like that. So some of it's in better condition than others, but it's all working. It's uh, saving me quite a bit of money, as you can see, because to buy all that in new would have uh, probably cost quite a lot. I was hoping, um, if space would allow, um, to try and cut some of the roads in half using the point work, and then I could store two trains on the same track. But unfortunately, it, it really isn't long enough um, for the, uh, the type of trains I'm going to be running on the layout. Um, so if I want a, a seven or eight coach train parked there, and I wanted to put a three or four car DMU behind it, there just isn't quite the space. Um, so instead what I'm going to do is just uh, keep all the, uh, the roads full length. Um, I'll then park the various trains in there, and if one of the trains is shorter and there is space either at this end or at that end, then I can park a DMU or something behind it and uh, it will still give me some running flexibility. Um, even with point work, if the fiddle yard is full to get a DMU out, it's going to have to run with something else doing the circuit at the same time. So I had to think about it, and I don't really think the point work is going to give me the flexibility I was after. If anything, it'll try and make the fiddle yard into a more rigid structure, which might offer me actually less flexibility, um, prohibiting the storage of perhaps longer trains in certain parts of it. So I'm just going to keep it simple, keep it all full length, and if there is space behind something, I'll park something behind it, and if there isn't, then there isn't, and that proves that the point work wasn't needed anyway. It's also going to save me some time, as I would have had to modify the points um, to get the, uh, the crossings to work, as you can see here. Um, it is possible to do that, plenty of people have done it, um, just takes a little bit of time. Um, on the scenic part of the layout, I will be having the tracks a more sort of scale um, spacing, uh, much like it is on the fiddle yard. And believe it or not, that is actually reasonably close to what it is like in real life. Um, Pico and set track of various manufacturers um, space the tracks apart considerably further um, because model train sets typically have very tight curves, so you need a big gap between each line to get around the corners. Um, I'll be having a scale spacing all around the layout, so uh, anywhere where I have a crossover like this I will have to modify the points, so you will probably see that in an upcoming video, um, but for the purposes of the fiddle yard, I don't think the points are going to give me the flexibility I wanted. Okay, so I'm going to make a push for the last, uh, last few bits, hopefully get the straights running all the way to the end, and then I'll work on the point work in the corner, and uh, we should, uh, should have a basic fiddle yard laid and then uh, I can think about uh, the placement of some point motors and uh, a few other bits and pieces. You'll see me wearing some gloves this time. Um, I hurt my hands yesterday, um, the various cuts and bruises and things. Um, I don't want to, to open up any of those wounds if I can um, on the tools up here, so uh, I've just put some gloves on to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, if you must know, I was replacing the dashboard in a 1979 Mercedes SL and uh, it was quite an involved job, and I ended up hurting myself a bit. But uh, not to worry, I got the job done and the car looks great, so uh, onwards.
Here's a little trick when you're recycling uh, old flexi track. Um, you can see this stuff has got bits of ballast on it. Um, it would have also you know, had a load of glue applied over it, so it's stuck in the uh, the curve that it was used on the previous layout. So uh, to revive it, and this applies to Code 100 as it's reasonably sturdy, I can't comment on anything else because I've not tried it. But uh, take yourself something flat, so I'm going to use the back of the workbench, and then just strike the track gently against the, uh, reasonably gently anyway, against the side of the, uh, the flat surface, and gradually, over a few whacks, the uh, ballast will gradually fall off, and the glue holding the track in the, sh in the curved position, or whatever position it's stuck in, um, will let go, and you will end up with a piece of flexi track that you can reuse. And now it is straight and also flexible again and most of the ballast has been shaken off. Some of it won't come off and you might need to pick it off with a screwdriver but uh, little bits I'm not going to worry about. Okay, I've finally got to the end. All of the track is laid into position. Um, I haven't done anything with regards to point motors or anything like that yet, but uh, that will come in a future video. The uh, dropper wires are all soldered on, which is a nice bonus, so uh, I can theoretically wire this all up and run something, but uh, I'm going to bide my time and wait until I've got a full circuit. Over on this side of the layout I intend to have the station starting off about here. Similar in a way to the old layout, I want to try and transfer some ideas from the old layout over to this one. Um, so what I've done is I have uh, made a much larger gap between the fast and slow lines, this gap here, and that is to allow for a platform. So the station will start almost immediately, and then the rest of the track plan will follow. It's taken a long time to lay obviously, but I am very happy with how it's coming along. I am in the process of just adding a few cosmetic sleepers just to fill some of the gaps. Um, you can see as I work my way down the fiddle yard, it looks relatively continuous, and that is because I have added cosmetic sleepers here and there. And again, to put things into perspective, that is one Hornby Mark III on its own, and it does seem an awfully long way away. I'm also pleased I took the decision not to include point work and try and divide the yard up. Having each road a full length, full 12 feet, is going to give me a lot of flexibility with the storage of trains. I'm going to be able to have some nice realistic consists of rolling stock, prototypical passenger train lengths, anything from 8 to 12 cars, um, HST formations, 7 and 8 cars in length, freight trains that are, you know, hugely long, you know, my entire rake of uh, shell uh, petroleum wagons will fit comfortably on there. Um, and some of the rakes that I've got in my collection I can now extend um, as I now have enough space to store a proper prototypically long train um, as appropriate for the era and region that the layout is set in. So uh, it's going to give me a lot of flexibility and I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing some of this stuff running around. But uh, until then I have a lot more to do. I've got to build all of the scenic deck going around on the scenic side and lay the track for it which will be in a future video. That's just one of the uh, sections where the dropper wires are all attached to the rails. I've left plenty of excess on the wiring as I'm not exactly sure how the bus wire will run underneath, but uh, whatever I decide to do I've got the flexibility there because each wire is long enough. They're all colour coded and uh, they're all in the same place for easy identification. There's the next section. There's four sections of droppers in total across the uh, total length of the fiddle yard, meaning each set of droppers is about three feet apart. 
using full lengths of flexi track means that each section of track has its own set of dropper wires, meaning that I do not have to rely at all on any electrical connections with uh, the fish plates. They are purely there to align the rails. Each side has got its own power supply. I also can't stress enough the importance of getting the baseboard right when you do this sort of thing. You need to take your time and get some decent baseboards. With the time I've taken over these ones and the materials I've used, I've got myself an extremely flat and level playing field here for the trains to run on. And even with all the care I've taken, there are one or two small undulations in the track which will not really cause me a problem. However, they are noticeable. Um, but uh, I would say it's about 97% good. It's very, very straight. It's very, very level. And uh, if I can get the scenic side to be slightly better than this, it's going to look brilliant when the trains run around. So that brings an end to this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. Um, this is by no means you know, the law on how you should do it. Um, your fiddle yard will differ depending on what you run and what you personally want to do with your layout. But I hope this has given you a couple of ideas, maybe hints and tips. I hope you all have a good Christmas break and I will be back as always with another video in 2018. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you saw, you can see more of our Junction videos by clicking on the left. You can click on the right and check out Dean Park Station, another excellent model railway set in Scotland in the 1980s.